welcome to another video. So today's video is going to be a DIY because I just felt like doing something like that today. So today I'm actually going to be making some cross country jumps. Now I've never actually made my own cross country jumps before so this is going to be a bit of a learning curve but I'm super excited to see how they turn out. So we have various collections of spare wood from old projects or fencing and things like that scattered around the farm. And I was thinking today I want to do something a bit like a DIY, a bit crafty um, and I was looking at all this wood and I was trying to decide what to make and then it struck me that I should make a cross country jump because we don't have any, we actually only have two jumps so the more jumps I can create the better. So I've chosen some of the longest pieces of wood that we have and I'm going to see what sort of cross country jump I can create. So in today's video I'm going to be making two different cross country fences so the first one that I'm going to do is going to be made out of pallets and this is going to be the smaller of the two fences because I wanted one that caramel could also jump over so what I'm going to do with these is actually cut them in half and make a brush box but once I add the brushes it'll be too big for caramel to jump so for now we're just going to focus on making the actual box itself so obviously these pallets are far too tall for caramel to jump so what I need to do is mark the halfway point and I'm going to cut them both in half so these pallets are like half pallets anyway um, so they don't have slats on either side they only have slats on one side so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting them in half so they are half the height but then I'm going to be screwing them together so they're double the width if that makes sense but you'll see what happens anyway. And then it was on to sawing them into half, so obviously it was quite difficult to get this straight, um, so I just did the best I could. And it turns out pallets are actually really hard to cut in half just because it's really awkward to kind of get to each slat. So once I had done one palette, I then did the second one. So sorry you can't really see what's going on too well, it's really hard to kind of film DIYs. But what I did is basically I put the two halves together so it was like double the width. Um, and then I used a piece of wood, just like a spare piece of wood that I had lying about and I'm going to use this as kind of like a bracket that's going to hold the two together um, so it's not like a hinge, it's like a fixed bracket and basically I just drilled holes in either side um, of the wood, you know, just so that it'll cover both sides um, and then I just screwed it in and that means that it has fixed the two pallets together and I repeated this on the other side um, and I did that for the other pallet as well and then that gave us the nice boxes so here we have completed jump number one I said I'm going to make this into a brush box but I'm going to do that at a later stage because otherwise it'll be too big for caramel to have a go at jumping. So it's time to move on to our second jump. This is going to be the bigger and sort of harder to make of the two and this is going to be for chili to jump. So to begin with I had many lengths of wood that I needed to measure to see how long I could make the jump. Um, and how high and things like that and just kind of get my head around the size that I wanted it to be. Yeah. 
So once I'd come up with the idea of how I wanted the jump to be in my head, I then started sort of cutting things to the size I thought I needed, but this was all very trial and error at this point. So I will go through exactly how you make the jump, um, but I was actually just kind of trying things and see if they worked or not, um, because I really didn't have a, a clue at this point. I was just kind of making it up as I went along, but I'm super happy with the finished results. So. Something obviously clicked, um, but yeah, I started just cutting height, so I decided I wanted it to be two foot high, and I wanted a right angle with a slope, um, and then like a flat top. You'll understand um, in a moment as to like what I envisaged. So I've spent ages like trying to decide how I'm going to do this, and I think this is going to be the best way. So I know I want the height to be two feet, and and then I was trying to work out how I'm going to like arrange it all. So if I have a base to hold it all together, then I have this, um, which is the same width, and then I attach my um, edge on. It'll all make sense in the end, because this is just me working out how I'm going to do it, because then I can show you guys um, how you do it at home. But yeah, this has taken me so long to try and work out how I'm just going to get it to stand up. Okay, so after a lot of cutting, a lot of measuring, and generally just changing my plan about five times, I finally worked out the pieces that I needed to make the two kind of wings or the two supports um, that are going to be my jump. So I'm going to have two ends. My design is basically going to consist of two ends and then slats attaching them and going across the middle. So these are the two ends and these are all the pieces that you need for them. So it's five pieces in total. So your height, um, mine was two foot so I needed a piece of wood that was two foot tall. Then because of the angle I'd chosen to do I needed a 28 inch um, front which is slanted and the angle at the top um, depends on how much you want your slant of your jump and then the floor I needed an inside and an outside because this is going to be um, where the strength comes from this is going to take all the weight and this is my base so I need it to be balanced so the inside is going to measure 20 inches and then the outside is me measuring 22 inches and that's in length and then I also needed a little top section to attach the height and the front together um, and this was just 10 inches and I'd cut it to the same angle um, as the front piece so that it all was nice and level. So basically you need all of these pieces and then you need to repeat it again so that you have two little wings. 
And so once this is all cut, it's then time to screw it all together. So now we have the two ends and like the base of the jump made so the next step is to add the slats but before you do that you need to make sure that these are stable and that they are level because obviously once you start screwing the slats on you've got a quite a big jump um, so it needs to be very secure and not going to topple over or anything like that. So my slats I managed to measure them and they were just under 10 feet. Um, I just kind of cut them to the sort of longest length I could. So this jump's going to be just under 10 feet, which is what I'm quite happy with. Um, so the way I did the slats was I just did it by eye. At the end of the day, it's a homemade cross country fence. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I am actually really happy with the way it came out. And I think it does look really professional. Um, as you'll see in a little bit. So I just went ahead and screwed the slats in. I just put sc two screws in each side to make sure that they didn't move or anything. Um, and at times I used a block that I'd screwed into the wood um, just to help me hold one end because obviously I didn't have anyone to hold the wood in place for me. So if you are on your own and you're struggling, then if you get a block of wood um, and put a screw in it, it will help you hold the slats in place um, while you screw the rest of it in. My arena is not a litter box. Excuse me. Go go. It's not a litter tray. Don't just ignore me. I can see you. It's like, nope, you can't. Uh, excuse me. Oh my goodness. So I actually originally planned on not painting the fence, however, we all know I'm quite partial to a bit of paint and I just couldn't help myself. I really wanted to keep it looking rustic, but then just the thought of it like matching my other jumps if I use it in the arena um, and I also thought that when I put it out on the field and do use it in sort of more of a cross country setting, it'll just look really good if it's, you know green and cream um so i did end up painting it and to be honest i am really happy that i did decide to do that uh, because once it's had a few coats it's going to be looking amazing um it was getting quite late at this point and my camera cut out so sorry that it like ends suddenly um but yes yeah, so i did decide to paint it and i'm so proud of this fence like it's a really good looking little jump and to say it's made out of scrap wood and I had no idea what I was doing, um, I'm actually really proud of it.
So it's actually now the next day because I ran out of time, but look at this. So I given the jump a couple more coats and guys I am so pleased with myself for making this I literally I'm so proud of it um I mean I'm no joiner but I'd say that's pretty good for you know making it on my own so this is what it looks like it looks so good now I've painted it I was planning on leaving it rustic um but I just couldn't resist. You know what I'm like, the paint calls me. So I have painted it, I just need to finish off a little spot that I've missed where it's dripped. But I am so pleased with this. And obviously there is my other one over here. So this one, I am keeping rustic and I'm going to leave it um, looking more like a cross country fence uh, because I am going to add brushes eventually so that Chili can jump it and um, so it's a bit more of a decent height but now I think we'll try it out so obviously I can't just make cross country fences I have got to test them There's a reason I never got picked for high jump. <sighs> I think I'll stick to the horses jumping and me staying on their backs. But this was really fun to make um hope you guys have a go at your own obviously be safe if you do and even if you just make them to jump yourselves at home um and not for your horses it is quite fun so i'm gonna leave this video here guys i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you tomorrow at 12.